Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to our second lecture on the nature of geometrical optics, optical systems, uh, and all of that good stuff. So what we're going to talk about today is, first of all, we're going to review a little bit of what we talked about in the previous lecture. And this was the idea, in a sense, of um, when light is interacting with a surface, we understand that it does two things. It can either reflect off of that surface or it can refract through that surface. And we had ourselves um, Snell's law, which indicated um, the connection between the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction. We took that forward a little bit and we said, okay, well, you know, if I take some sort of a system, you know, like a glass lens, for instance, and I send some light through it, it's going to refract through in a very predictable way. This was the thin lens formula, and this was our understanding of how we form images. These images come in two types. An image can either be real or it can be virtual. We'll talk a little bit more about the difference between real and virtual images today, and then we're going to extend our knowledge a little bit by talking about multi-lens systems. And this is going to uh, kind of get out what you're going to be studying in studio um, either later this week or later on in the semester whenever you uh, happen to be watching this video where one of the pieces in studio is we're going to have you build um, a pseudo microscope. Microscopes of course are generally speaking two lens systems so it's going to uh, help us to understand how these systems behave. So again, this is our big to-do for today. Let's review a little bit about thin lenses. Let's remember how lenses create images. Let's review the distinction between a real image and a virtual image and how you sort of tell uh, whether or not a lens is going to produce one or the other. And then we will bounce into um, doing a nice long sample problem with a multi-lens system. And this will set you up for um, studying the microscopes in studio and will also help you uh, when you get to the homework. And the homework asks you on um, to develop questions with multi-lens systems. So first of all, just a little bit of a review. So we uh, remember that um, the parameters of a lens creating an image necessarily obey this beautiful equation here. This, of course, is known as the thin lens equation. All right, and as a reminder, the F is the focal length of the lens. Make sure you keep the sign uh, of that lens correct. Positive focal length is a converging lens. Negative focal length is a diverging lens. This thing here that we call S, this is the object distance. And remember, it's measured kind of weirdly, where we start at the lens and we measure outwards. We measure towards uh, where the object is located. And that gives us then uh, positive values of S if the image occurs, if you like, on the front side of the lens. And then S prime, of course, is our image distance. We measure this from the center of the lens to where the image appears. This is kind of that weird um, plus minus sign that you have to keep track of. Uh, if the image occurs on the back side, of the lens, as it does here, the image distance is positive. And this is a really nice way to tell. If I have a lens that is creating an image, how do I know if that image is going to be real or virtual? Um, real images will always have positive values of their image distances. And virtual images will always have negative values for their image distance. Nice easy way to tell. Uh, we also motivated in lecture 19 that you can determine the magnification of some image by simply taking the ratio of the image's height to the object's height. So of course this means that if an image is magnified by 5, if you have a 5x magnification, for instance, this of course means that your image will be five times larger than the object. We use a little trigonometry uh, in the previous lecture to motivate that I can also write this as the negative ratio of the image distance to the object distance. Now, remember what I talked about a little bit earlier, this idea that um, real images always have positive values for their image distances. So if I just think about this a little bit and plug this in, you know, I'm gonna have a positive value, give me a moment here, positive value for the image distance. I would have a positive value for the object distance, but the presence of this minus sign means that if I have a, um, positive object distance, positive image distance, this means my image is real, the minus sign implies that that image is inverted. It's flipped across the horizontal axis. This also implies, since um, real images always have positive image distances, that real images will always be inverted. Nice little way that you can tell whether or not an image is real or virtual. You can check the image distance if it's positive or negative. You can check what the image is doing. If it is inverted, 
with respect to the object that creates it, it is real. If it is upright with respect to the object that creates it, it is a virtual image. I'll show you some examples a little bit later. I'm going to pull up a FET simulation and we will um, look at sort of the transition between um, how an image becomes real um, and how an image becomes virtual. But for now, let's try a question out here. All right, what we want to get at here is, in, in a sense, what is the point of the microscope? The microscope is to provide a large amount of magnification for some particular object. So I want to take my object and I want the image to appear that is larger than the object. This is the point, right? I want to take a little cell in a microscope and I want to make its image larger so that I can see uh, what's going on within that cell. So to do so, it turns out that there's a mm, sweet spot with respect to these lenses that if you place an object within this region, you will guarantee that your image is going to be magnified. Let's figure out what that sweet spot is. We're gonna start with this question here. If I take an object and I place it at the focal point, which means my object distance is the focal length for this particular lens. If I do so, if I place this object there, what's gonna be the magnification of the final image? Take a minute, work through this problem for yourself, pause this video, give us an answer in grade scope, and return to the video when you're ready to continue. All right, so for here, to be able to calculate the magnification, I really need to know what the image distance is. Because once I know the object distance and the image distance, I plug them into the magnification formula and I'm all set. So essentially what I need to do here is to say, I need to use the thin lens equation. I'm gonna plug in the object distance, which is the focal length, and I'm gonna determine what the image distance is. Let me show you how this works. I'm gonna do this. All right, so here, once again, I'm taking the thin lens equation, and notice that I skipped a step here. Um, I took the thin lens equation and I rearranged it to solve for the image distance, the S prime. So essentially, I'm just subtracting one over S from both sides of the equation, all right? I am going to take um, my object distance, or in this case, I can take the focal length, because it's the same, both of them are equal, and I will substitute one for the other. In this particular solution, I'm taking my focal length and I'm substituting it for the object distance. You can also do it the other way if you want to. You can take the object distance and substitute in the focal length. We get the same answer either way. So what results here? I end up getting the same term subtracted from itself and I get zero as an answer. So I still need to get the image distance, but here now I have that one over the image distance is equal to zero. This means I need to invert both sides of the equation. So this therefore implies that the image distance is going to be one over zero. And until the mathematicians get back to us with a better answer of what happens when we divide by zero, we're going to assume that the answer here is infinity. So this means that the image distance for an object that is placed at the focal point appears at infinity. What does infinity mean? This is a bit of a weird construct, right? So really what infinity is saying here is that the object is, or excuse me, the image is being thrown so far away with respect to the lens that the light rays really never come together and converge. You'd have to be in a sense infinitely far away to be able to see them converge. So I can take this infinite distance, I plug it in for my magnification and I find that the magnification is also infinite as well. And this should make sense. If I'm throwing an image, excuse me, if I'm throwing an image very, very far away, in this case, if I'm throwing it infinitely far away, I'm expecting that the magnification should be very large and in fact should approach infinity. So in a sense here, um, uh, the answer is there really isn't an image that is created. And infinity is sort of our placeholder here for saying that these light rays take so long to converge that they would never do so, in a sense, in, in the conceivable universe. But if the universe was big enough for them to do so, they would produce an image that is so large that it is, in a sense, infinitely large. So a bit of the caveat here that it doesn't really make sense to speak of an image that is infinitely far away. This is sort of our limiting behavior, if you will. Any real image that's going to be produced must be smaller than this, must be produced closer than this. But I do want you to notice that this is provided for us, as I previously mentioned, a limit. If one moment here, let me annotate again. If I take an object and I place it at the focal point, of some lens, 
It's going to throw that image infinitely far away. And in fact, this is, a, you remember from lecture 19, this is the definition of the focal point, right? Any light that comes in from infinity, comes in from very far away, it is parallel when it hits the lens, um, refracts through the lens and arrives at the focal point. It also works the other way, well, uh, the way, other way around as well. If I have light that is generated from the focal point and passes through some lens, the lens will take all of that light and shove it out parallel, such that they never converge. The images form at infinity. So this is one of our limitations, all right? I can magnify an image very, very big if I place that object at the focal point. Let's try to find another limiting case. So here's another question for you. Do the same sort of reasoning you did before, but now I'm going to be placing the object at two times the focal point, twice as far away um, as the standard focal point um, for some given lens. What would the magnification be in this case? Take a moment, pause this video, work out some calculations for yourself, give us an answer in grade scope, and return to the video when you're ready. All right, so let's do this math together. Turns out to be exactly the same argument that we just did for the previous question. So let's walk through it here. Once again, uh, give me a moment here. I'm gonna annotate. Once again, I take the thin lens equation and I solve for what I'm looking for, which is the image distance. So I'm just rearranging, I'm subtracting one over S from both sides. I'm going to plug in that I want my object distance to be twice the focal length. So here it is. I get a one over two F. What happens to this fraction here? Essentially, I'm, I'm doing one minus one half. What is one minus one half? Well, it's one half. So I'm left with one over two F. I'm gonna invert both sides. And this means then that the image distance is going to be, interestingly, just like the object distance, twice the focal length. So I'm gonna take that value now from my image distance. I'm gonna plug it into the uh, image distance in my magnification, and look what I get. The image distance is equal to the object distance. These two cancel, and I get a magnification of minus one. Minus one magnification, meaning that the object is exact, excuse me, the image is exactly the same size as the object, but the minus sign, of course, meaning that it is inverted as opposed to upright. Now, you shouldn't believe me, all right? I need to prove this to you. And let's do that here. Let's look at a FET simulation. Let's see how some of these rays behave as I move my image around. All right. So I love these FET simulations here. Again, a big plug uh, to go to their website and fiddle around uh, with some of these. These are really, really nice illustrations. So here, I have a standard lens. It has marked its focal points. As you see here, these are the X's. All right, I mark for you the principal rays, which are the ones that are passing through the focal points and coming out of the lens parallel. Note, of course, that one of these rays is not hitting the lens. It doesn't matter. Um, you can assume that the lens, in a sense, fills the entire screen in this case, so that I get all um, of this particular interaction. So we found, by solving those questions, that as my object gets closer and closer to the focal point, the image gets thrown farther and farther away. Let's see that happen here. All right, here's my object. Note that it's creating an image. Note what happens as I take the object and I move it closer and closer to the focal point. The image gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and it gets farther and farther away until I hit the focal point exactly. All right, notice again how this is producing an infinite image. These two rays here on the back side are parallel. They never converge. So again, this is the, the, the idea that I was refer, referring to that an image in infinity is not really an image because you don't really get these rays to form. It's sort of our limitation in a sense. So an object placed at the focal point produces an image all the way out in infinity. What was our other limitation that we learned? The problem we just solved says if I place the object at twice the focal point, I should receive an image that is exactly the same size but is inverted. So let's try that instead. So now let's take our object. I'm gonna start moving it back away from the focal point. Note again, the magnification of this image is still bigger than one. It is being magnified with respect to the object everywhere within this region. Notice here, I'm gonna draw it farther back, 
farther back. And I'm going to place the object now. Oh, let's guesstimate right about, well, I'd say right about here would be about twice the focal length of this lens. Notice once again, I take a look at my image. The image is inverted as we expect, the presence of that minus sign. And when I place the object at twice the focal length, the image is the same size as the object. All right. The simulation is also going to help us in our hunt for virtual images, but we're going to come back to that in just a little bit. Okay, with this in mind, answer this question for me. If I want to magnify an object, if I want my image to be larger than the object, what are the conditionals in a sense? Where must I place the object with respect to the lens to produce a magnified image? Think on the questions that we just asked, pause this video, give us an answer in grade scope, and return to the video when you're ready. All right, so we just learned from answering the previous two questions that if I place an object at the focal point, it goes all the way out to infinity. If I place the object at twice the focal point, the magnification becomes minus one. So theoretically, if I place it anywhere between this region, I should be getting a magnification between one and infinity. This is a magnified object, which is exactly what we've been trying to do this whole time. Let me show you some other cases, just in case you don't believe me. It's got to be somewhere else in this region that works, right? Let's just try another number. Let's try 3F. Let's try placing it at three times the focal length, all right? Once again, I take my thin lens equation. I spin it around. I solve for the image distance. I plug in that my object distance is three times the focal length. One minus one-third is two-thirds. So I flip this around, and I get that the image distance is three halves times the focal length. Here's my image distance. Here's my object distance. Oh, they cancel out, but now I get less than one. If I place the object beyond two times the focal length of a particular lens, it is going to start demagnifying the image. All right, just in case you don't believe me, let me prove it to you. Let's go back to this beautiful simulation. Here was our 2F our one times magnification. What happens now if I drag the object farther away to the left? Now I'm over here at about three times the focal length. What happens to the image? Now it is being demagnified. This is not helpful for us because I want to magnify. I want these images to be larger than their constituent objects, not smaller than the constituent objects. So anywhere outside of 2F is not going to work. It's going to produce a smaller image. Doesn't help us there. Well, what if we tried the other side? Let's go inside instead, inside the focal length. What if I did an F over two in that case? All right, well, what am I gonna get here? Let's see, I'm gonna do the same kind of thing. Uh, sorry, one moment, let me annotate. I take the thin lens equation, I solve for the image distance. I'm going to plug in that the object distance will be half of the focal length, as you see here. And what do I get? This is essentially one minus two. One minus two is minus one. So I get here that the image distance will be negative the focal length. Remember what I talked about earlier. This is one of our beautiful indications of determining whether or not my image is real or virtual. I find here that the image distance is negative. Image distances being negative imply that virtual images are created. Let's remind ourselves the, dis the difference here between a real and a virtual image before we go on. So as a reminder, this image right here that's being created, this is a real image. A real image is an image that is created by light rays that are coming in and converging to a particular point. Note that all these light rays here, I'll move the object a little bit, all these light rays here hit the lens, and converge. Again, if you don't like the idea that they extend a bit beyond the lens here, I'll change the rays for you. All right, now here's all the rays that are going to hit the lens. Notice again that they all converge to a point. Convergence of light rays produces real images. These images can be projected onto surfaces because they are due to convergence. This is exactly how a projector works. Uh, if we were back to uh, teaching in person, I'd be presenting these um, PowerPoints by lecture. And the lecture, those, um, that projector, would take 
this object, the PowerPoint slide that I am preparing, and it would create a real image that could be projected onto a screen. And again, the projection works because it is real, because there's convergence of these light rays. This is different from a virtual image. Virtual images are created by divergence of light rays. Let me show you here. Notice that regardless of where I place the object, um, as long as it is outside the focal point, I always get convergence. I always get real images. Here's a nice thing to remember. Whenever the object is outside of the focal point of a converging lens, the image it produces is real. And here you can see why. The light rays will always converge. They may do so at different distances and produce different magnifications, but the images are always real. What do we see in that last problem that we looked at? We, we noticed there that um, the image distance was negative. This implies that the image is virtual, and this occurred when I took the object and I placed it inside of the focal point. Let's do this here. I'm gonna move back to principal rays, and notice once again, watch, watch this. Watch as the object crosses the focal point. Note again, I'm in the sweet spot, I'm in the zone right here between F and 2F, so notice how my image is always being magnified within this region. Continues to be magnified, continues to be magnified, continues to be magnified until I hit this point exactly. This is the transition, if you will, between a real image and a virtual image that is being created. So now let's bring it inside the focal point and watch what happens. Oh, here comes something. Now, look what's happening to these rays. Okay, the green rays that are taking place here. These, in a sense, are fake. I love this. It is your brain, in a sense, tricking itself. Because what you're doing is, once, uh, give me a second to annotate here, you are looking from this side, all right? Here's your eyeball, all right? Your eye is seeing these rays right here. These rays are coming off of the lens, and they are going in and, and hitting your eye. But your eye is taking these rays and saying, this is not forming a real image. Because as you notice here, these rays are divergent. They will never converge, even all the way out to infinity, to form a real image. So your brain does something kind of fun here, all right? Your brain takes these divergent rays and says, ah, well, I understand, I, I am brain, I am smart. And I understand that light travels in a straight line. So what your brain does is it takes these divergent rays right here. Your brain assumes that those divergent rays must have come from an object producing them in straight lines. And your brain draws these rays backwards. Again, assuming that the light was coming from an object and those rays were moving in a straight line. This is why. This image that is created is referred to as a virtual image. It does not exist. It cannot, virtual images cannot be projected onto things. Virtual images, quite frankly, are figments of your imagination. It is your brain taking these divergent rays, drawing them backwards and saying, ah, they must have come from an image that is behind the object and producing them in straight lines. So I am going to fool you into thinking that there is actually an image there. This is really, really cool. A couple of examples of this. This is exactly how a magnifying glass works. If you take a magnifying glass and you place it really close to some object, what do you see? You see a magnified upright image. That magnifying glass is fooling your brain in this exact way. It is producing divergent rays for you. Your brain interprets those divergent rays as if they were coming from an object that was larger and sitting on the other side of the lens, and it fools your brain into producing an image that you see, that virtual image. Another example, uh, you very likely are um, familiar with the little peepholes that occur in any of your um, dorm room doors, for instance, um, if you're living in an apartment, you have one of these so that you can see out um, uh, the front door, what those create are virtual images. They take the light from a very large angle of entry, pushes them through this lens, which diverges the light into your eye, 
when you're looking into it. It fools your brain into thinking that those rays must have come from straight line sources and produces this virtual image that you can see. As you notice from here, another really easy way to tell whether or not an image is real or virtual. Notice here, this is a virtual image that is created, this virtual image is upright. When I go back to the real image, the real image is inverted. And again, really encourage you to play around um, with this FEP simulation. A lot of really cool things you can do with this. Um, you can, of course, do mini rays. So I can see lots and lots of rays interacting simultaneously. Note that some of them don't even care that the lens is there, but your light, uh, excuse me, your eye will take this divergent light and, of course, um, draw them backwards. You can do more points than one if you want to see how multiple points are affected um, in both the virtual image and the real image as well. Just play around with this. Uh, a little bit. This is a nice little fetch and will give you a really good sense of how real and virtual images are created. All right, let's go back to the slides here. So I hope that hits a couple of uh, very common questions that we get for um, some of these particular topics. How do I tell the difference between real and virtual? I just gave you three different ways that you can check. You can check the images, uh, you can check where the object is placed, you can check the um, positive or negative on the image distance, and you can check whether or not the image is upright or inverted. All right, and then of course some questions on can we please have some practice uh, with the multi-lens system? Absolutely, I'm gonna give you some practice. So let's do this together. So I'm gonna move this through this uh, fairly quickly. This is just a reminder of um, uh, lecture 19 where we worked on how do we determine where an image is going to appear. We motivated these principal rays for the image, one of which travels straight through the lens and is not deflected whatsoever. One of which passes into the lens parallel and exits through the focal point. The other one enters through the focal point and exits parallel. Notice again, give me a second to annotate, that all of these rays are converging to a particular point. This means that this image will be real. Real images are produced by convergent light. Virtual images are produced by divergent light and by tricking your brain a little bit, which again is so cool. It just tricks your brain uh, into being like, oh yeah, you know, there must be an image there because there's light that's coming in uh, in straight lines. You just draw, it's literally a figment of your imagination. How cool is that? All right, let's see. So of course, that is where my image would appear, and this image is real because it is convergent light. Focal lengths, object distance, image distance. Remember, if the object appears in front of the lens, it is a positive image distance. If the image appears behind the lens, it is a positive image distance. So both of these, as I indicate here, um, S and S prime um, for this particular example would be positive numbers. All right, let's show you the virtual image. Now, the virtual image works very much the same way, but you have to draw things backwards. You have to do the brain trick um, to draw your divergent rays backwards. So as before, one of them passes through the middle of the lens, nothing happens to it. One of them comes in parallel and exits through the focal point. Now, the last one, I cannot have it enter the lens through the focal point. So instead, what happens is the light appears to have originated from the focal point, hits the lens, and comes up parallel. Now, once again, you are viewing this virtual image from this side, right here. So your brain is going to see these three divergent light rays, and it's gonna say, ah, I am brain, I am smart, I understand that light moves in a straight line, so I'm gonna take all of these divergent light rays, and I will draw them backwards assuming that they had moved in straight lines. As before, the image appears where in this case the rays appear to converge, which is here. This is a virtual image because the light rays, the true, in a sense, light rays that are creating it are divergent. It is the fake uh, aspect of it that your brain is superimposing, which is drawing them backwards and seeing this virtual image. All right, once again, focal lengths on both sides. My object distance is positive because it appears on the front side of the lens, but now my image distance is negative 
Remember, positive images only appear on backsides of lenses. So if I have here a, an image that appears on the same side of the lens as the object, that image distance will be negative. We see a minus S prime here. It's on the front side of the lens and hence is a negative image distance. All right, we're done with our review. Let's do an example. All right, how do I handle um, images produced by multiple lenses at once? So let me read through a couple of these for you. So we're given the focal lengths for both of these lenses. We know how, um, what the separation distance is between the lenses, and we are also given the initial object distance for the first lens. Now, before we even go into any sort of problem solving, let's think a little bit about what we expect. All right, if I have here, an object, an object distance that is placed outside of the focal length of a converging lens. I know it's converging because it's a positive value of the focal length. What kind of image do I expect to get? Well, an object distance that is outside of the focal length, I expect it is going to produce a real image. Again, if you don't believe me, go back to that FET simulation, place the object outside the focal length, you will see a real image occurring. So I better get a positive value for my image distance. Good way to check um, whether or not I'm doing uh, the correct mathematics. Now, here's the way to handle two lens systems. Nice and straightforward. To do two lens systems, you do it one lens at a time. And you ignore the other lens completely when you are solving one of these lenses. Let me show you how it works. Here's what we're gonna do. I am not even going to admit the fact that lens two is there. Don't care, I'm gonna do one lens at a time. So let's now focus our attention on this first lens. All right, this is what I would like you to do. Um, I don't think we have a uh, entry for this in grade school, but I would like you to uh, work through the mathematics a little bit here for yourself. If we consider just this first lens, please derive for me, let me annotate once again, what is the image distance? Will it be upright or inverted? And what will be its magnification? Do the first lens only. Go ahead and pause the video, do some calculations for yourself, resume the video when you are ready to confirm that your math is correct. All right, so let's take a look a little uh, at some of the mathematics for this one. So I'm going to use the thin lens equation. Here we are. As I've done before, I am going to solve it for the image distance which of course means that I will subtract the object distance. The focal length is positive. The object, or the object distance is positive. Note the minus sign is only present here because I'm subtracting one over S from both sides of the equation. I still have a positive value for my object distance. This results in one over 24. This is a positive value for the image distance. Therefore, my image is real. Therefore, it will be inverted with respect to the object. Let's finish off the question here. All right, here's my image. I'm 24 centimeters on the back side of the lens, and I know it is real because it is a positive image distance, so therefore, uh, my image formed will be upside down. Let's finish the question here. Um, the magnification is minus image distance over object distance. Both image and object distance are positive. So I get here that the magnification is negative. This again confirms what I expected. I expected the image to be real. Real images should have a negative magnification and that is exactly what I found. Minus two. So it appears that our image is being magnified twice its original size. This makes sense because it is being placed within that sweet spot of f to 2f. So I do expect that my magnification should be bigger than one. Indeed it is. All right, now I have figured out everything that I need with respect to a lens one. Now we ignore it completely. The image from lens one becomes the object for lens two. Bit a, bit a little bit tricky here in, in the sense that um, the object for the second lens is appearing behind the second lens. This is a weird sort of thing that we refer to as a virtual object. Because the object is appearing on the back side of the lens, this means, as indicated here, 
that the object distance is going to be negative. Remember our convention, if the object appears on the front side, positive object distance. If the object appears on the back side, it is a negative object distance. All right, so let's use this information. Let's finish our calculation. So go ahead and again and try this for yourself. I have the object distance, which will be negative. I have my focal length. Where is the image going to appear? Go ahead and pause the video. Really quick, work through these calculations for yourself. Resume the video when you're ready to confirm your answers. All right, so let's walk through the math together. Once again, I'm gonna do the same thing that I did before. I'm gonna take the thin lens equation, I'm gonna spin it around to solve for the image distance. Here's my focal length of the second lens. Remember, I'm done with the first lens completely. Now we're focusing on the second lens. The object appears behind the second lens. So I must admit that it carries a negative object distance. All right, these two negatives will cancel. I get an answer of seven over 24. I can reduce this down. And this tells me then that my image distance is going to be 3.4 centimeters. I got a positive image distance. What does that mean? That means that my final image must be real. Well, let's, see if, let's see if that falls out. All right, let's keep going here. So here is my final image, 3.4 centimeters positive value on the back side of the lens, because it is positive. Let's finish the calculation here. Um, let's see, do not forget, once again, let me annotate, positive image distance. This came from the thin lens formula. But again, the original object, this virtual object that we're using for the second lens appeared on the back side of the lens, hence has a negative value for its object distance. I must keep that when I go through my calculation. Note that the negative signs will cancel and I end up with a magnification that is positive. Now, be careful. Positive magnification here means same orientation with respect to the object that created it. So since the object that is creating this image is upside down, positive magnification implies that the eventual image will also be upside down as a result. All right. Let's see. Let's finish off the calculation. Uh, recall from the reading that when I have a multi-lens system that the total magnification from all of the lenses at once is the product of the individual magnifications. So I'm gonna plug in that the first lens produced a magnification of minus two, the second lens produced a magnification of 0.43. I combine these two together and this gives me the total resultant magnification. This is with respect to the original object. So my original object here, after passing through both lenses, will create an image that is upside down with respect to it, minus sign, and slightly demagnified. The number is a little bit less than one. So as we expect, here's my final image. It is inverted with respect to the original object, and it is a little bit smaller. It is in fact 86% um, small. All right. I hope that example was helpful uh, to walk through uh, in terms of keeping track of the plus minus signs. And again, multi-lens systems, nice and easy. Take it one lens at a time. The image for lens one becomes the object for lens two. The image for lens two becomes the object for lens three. All of the individual magnifications as you go through are with respect to the object and image created by that one lens only. Notice again, I have a positive magnification here, which means with respect to the second lens, the object that the second lens is using and the image that the second lens is producing will be the same orientation with respect to each other because of this positive sign in the magnification. Now, if I consider the totality of this system, both lenses producing this final image with respect to the original object, what kind of image was it? 
think back a little bit. You may have to review some of the previous slides, pause this video, give us an answer in grade scope, and resume the video when you're ready for the answer. All right, so let's think about this a little bit here. What was produced by this? Well, let's go through with sort of our checks. Uh, once again, let me annotate one moment, please. Here is my object. Here is my final image. The final image is inverted with respect to the original object. We also know that this image here, because it is inverted with respect to the original object, must be real as well. So I'm finding here an inverted, real, demagnified, as you see from the magnification image. Let's see, are there any of those uh, that are satisfied? Um, no, looks like not. So the answer here is none of the above. The image is real because it has a positive final image distance. It is inverted with respect to the image, uh, the original object, which is another way that you could tell that it is real, incidentally. And our final magnification, um, the product of all the individual magnifications was less than one. And this implies that the image must be smaller than the original object that created it. All right, I hope that was helpful for you uh, to be able to demystify uh, a little bit of the trickiness of multi-lens systems. Uh, when we come back to our next lecture, lecture 21, we're going to discuss the physics of the eye, how the eye essentially behaves like a two-lens system. And if that's the case, I can discuss how contact lenses placed on your eye produce images that the eye then uses to create into real ones. We'll talk about correcting your vision, and we'll talk about why, for instance, you may be aware uh, that if you wear contact lenses or if you wear glasses to see things that are far away, I'm sure you're very well aware that your uh, prescription for those is a negative number. Everyone's contact lenses, everyone's glasses to see things far away will have a negative number on your prescription. When we come back to lecture 21, we will talk about why your prescription must have a negative number. All right, thank you very much for your attention today. I hope this was helpful for you, and I hope you enjoyed the studio on microscopes and real and virtual images.